morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Panasonic Computer Product Solutions Press Launch Event 2014. My name is Jan Urban. I'm your MC for today, and we have, uh, while well, you all have seen the agen agenda, hopefully, uh, we have a couple of presentations, but then also time for some touch and try in a little launch area. Uh, please feel free also to take pictures at any time. We will do some live demonstrations, so um, I hope you will have uh, some interesting insights. Um, before we now kick off uh, completely, I would like to have uh, only a few housekeeping rules. Uh, please be kindly uh, switch off your mobile phones or put on silent mode. That would be very kind for the presentations. Um, also, as an information, you will all receive after the launch event um, a USB stick. Uh, with all the presentations, uh, sorry, not with all the photos, with all the um, uh, uh, press copy, obviously, uh, data sheet, video, footage material, so um, that should be also fine. And um, yeah, and uh, well, later on I will touch a bit on, on organization, how we will uh, keep on. I hope everybody has checked out. If not, please do straight after the, the launch because uh, we will end about 12 o'clock having done lunch. Um, and uh, therefore then the, the, the hotel uh, needs the room back. Okay, so that was a short intro and now I would like to introduce our first keynote speaker which is our director of Panasonic Computer Product Solutions, Mr. Mark Tornen. Good morning, guten Morgen, buongiorno, uh, bonjour. I can tell it in Finnish, but uh, there is a different meaning of that word in English then, uh, so I'm going to avoid that. Um, I'm very proud to be here in front of all of you today to present uh, two new products of the Panasonic Toughbook Toughpad uh, product division. Over the last nearly 20 years, we've been developing many Toughbook and Toughpad products, and today it's about a 5-inch handheld tablet called the Toughpad FZ-E1 and FZ-X1. Basically, to cut a long story short, the FZ-E1 is the Windows-based version, and the FZ-X1 is the Android-based version. My name is Mark Thorne, and I'm responsible for the Toughbook and Toughpad business in Europe. So, just a short overview about Panasonic Corporation, because some of you uh, might be familiar with Panasonic as a corporation, some of you might not. Basically, the founder, Konosuke Matsushita, founded Panasonic Corporation, and his philosophy was to devote all the strengths and energy into providing a better life to the people. Today our president is Mr. Tsuga, and of course the philosophy of the company has not changed, and we put the people in the center of all of our activities to provide uh, a better life. This, of course, has remained. So after nearly one century, Panasonic has more than 15,000 products. And I must admit, even I have not seen them all yet. For example, in Japan, uh, Panasonic is selling complete houses with all energy solutions uh, integrated and so on. Consolidated net sales uh, last fiscal year, which ended March 31st, was 60 billion euros. And many of you might not know, uh, Panasonic actually holds more than 100,000 patents for technologies. Established in 1918, we have grown from three to more than 300,000 employees, just as some key figures. <coughs> the corporate company structure, um, the current one you, you will see um, on the chart here, and since uh, one and a half years now, Panasonic is in a transformation pro um, process. Basically, Panasonic for many, many years has been famous for consumer products. I'm sure you all know about televisions and cameras. Uh, but recently, this market has become very, very competitive. And due to many new technologies which can be offered to the corporate market, 
the entire corporation is in a process to change from a B2C to a B2B company. Historically, our product division has always been a B2B company. And you see the four key pillars of our corporation, which is the audio video company, the automotive and industrial systems, appliances and ecosystems. These are basically the four key pillars of the global Panasonic Corporation and the computer product solution division is sitting in the ABC group. So, basically, uh, a little talk about Panasonic, but from now on I will talk a little bit about the product. Um, I'm very proud here today and uh, probably need some help from a, a beautiful assistant here. The purpose of our meeting here with you today is uh, to launch our first 5-inch handheld tablet, the FZ E1 and the FZ X1. Because at the end, every mobile product is a compromise. 
So if you want a long battery life, this somehow adds weight to a product. Um, if you want um, a good thermal management, you need space for that. So at the end, every mobile product is a compromised solution, optimized for the usage and purpose um, on, in a specific environment. So we always balance those key technologies to the purpose and the fit of the requirements of our customers. And this is just a rough overview about our complete lineup. You see the tough pad family uh, in the upper area where we have all the tablets and slate products. But of course, historically, we've been producing, I'm sorry, developing, producing, and selling convertible products already since many years, clamshell products, and uh, many others since many years. Our entire product development is, is based on the philosophy of our founder to provide a better life. And we have regular day-to-day -day meetings, all of our staff, the key account managers, the service people, the engineers, the product, project managers. We have meetings with our customers every day. And we have events where we invite our customers on a regular basis, show them new technologies, and based on their feedback, we develop our products. And the history why we developed the two new products we launched here today basically comes by the fact that we have customers which have been using handheld devices, but they said the display is too small, the CPU is too weak, and the battery life is too short, there's no hot swap functionality for the battery. We have customers who have been using standard classic smartphones and they said they're not really fit for the enterprise environment, they're lacking security, they don't have a barcode reader functionality, and of course they're not rugged, so they're quite fragile. And then we have customers who've been using tablets, but they said, mm, I would like to have a voice functionality in there, and it's a bit too big to put in a pocket somewhere. So our customers said, can't you put this all in one? So, of course, it took a bit of time, but the FZ E1 and the FZ X1 basically is a result of that direct customer feedback. It's fully rugged, uh, a 5 inch large, yes, but a technician can still put this in one of his larger pockets. I could potentially even fit it into my Sacco pocket. It will look a bit bulky, but the majority of uh, the users of our products are typically somewhere out in the field or in a warehouse. It has a high capacity battery and a high performance. It has voice and it's fit for the enterprise environment. So what we did with this product, we combined the benefits which tablets provide with a large display and a high capacity battery with the advantages the typical handheld products provide, such as uh, the security and the barcode reader functionality, and of course the voice and the high-end CPU and rich app experience which comes from the traditional smartphone area. So if we look at our current tablet range, you can see that with the FZ E1 and the FZ X1, we have now completed our tough pad tablet lineup. One year ago, we launched the 20-inch 4K tablet, which you see on the top, based on Windows. We have a couple of products since quite a while uh, in the 10 to 13-inch category. Um, since a while, we have products in the 7-inch arena, and now with the FZ E1 and the FZ X1, we now completed the lineup in the 5-inch category. Another reason, of course, we don't just listen to our current customers. Of course, continuously, we also look at market data. This data is uh, from BDC. And if we look at the total rugged small form factor device forecast, you can see this business is more than, well, 800 million US dollars. 
so quite substantial. And um, we're targeting in the first year maybe roughly 1% of that. If we look at where in which branches and sectors these products are used, you can see that it's heavily dominated by manufacturing, transportation, and retail. Three sectors which historically, with many other products, we've been serving many customers already. So if we break this down into sectors, we've added utilities, government, and MOD because these are two sectors where we already know from many of our customers that they're looking for such a product since quite a while. Um, there are many, many different application and usage cases. So, by talking to our customers, they typically even show us the environment and tell us about the requirements from a functionality point of view, but also from a spec device point of view, where they want to use the products, how long it should last, how durable it should be, and so on. The single strategy for this product is very similar to all of our other products, basically. Across Europe, we have many key account managers, which manage the requirements of our customers every day. But since many years already, of course, we also cooperate with partners. You see, just a short extract here, we have many, many, many partners across Europe, and we rely on them, we have long years trusted relationships with them, and we jointly serve the requirements of the customers. The focus, as I told you in the beginning, of course, remains uh, the B2B approach, and all of our staff, similar to the staff of the partners, we focus on the business customers. I think this is uh, nearly the last slide for my part, um, just to illustrate you that it typically starts with a product, but the environment they are used in requires additional hardware, additional solutions. For example, we already know from certain customers that they will want this device integrated into the car. So with one or two of our partners, we are developing car mount solutions for this. Just as one of many examples, this product will be used in warehousing. So if you have uh, the Gabelstapler, the forklifters, they will want to have that integrated into forklifters. Um, so, the range of accessories and the ecosystem around the product will be very rich for this. And, of course, there are many additional services as we provide based on the requirements from the customers when it comes to security, uh, warranty extensions, accidental damage and so on. Um, it's, it's very extensive based on what we've been doing for many Toughbook and Toughpad products for many years already. But again, together with our partners, this is always customer-facing and direct customer touch activity. So with this, my introduction part is, is, is closed. Um, I'm available for you at the end for questions together with my colleagues, which will be shortly presented to you. And I'll be available, of course, during the entire day, should you have any specific questions. I thank you very much for your attention. I'm very happy to be here in front of you today, and I'm very proud to be able to present those new products. Thank you very much. <laughs> I pass on to my colleague Jan, who will now show you all the nitty gritty things inside and do some very uh, interesting live demonstrations for you.
That's it? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, let's get started. My name is Jan, in charge of marketing, product management, and let's have a closer look at, at the device itself. So basically, that's it. That's the beast. And uh, basically, what we made with that one is we combined our rugged technology pedigree, put this into our most rugged device which we have in our portfolio. Uh, you can also call it extreme rugged. It goes really to, to the highest rugged standards ever. But still, made sure it has the latest state-of-the-art <coughs> smartphone technology integrated, like quad-core from Snaps. Dragon out of the 8, 800 series. So basically, this is really one important thing that we want to make it rugged, but not sacrifice technology, speed, and performance. And on top of that is what is, of course, always important when we talk about outdoor devices is the display. We make sure we have a really good professional outdoor display, good color rate, contrast ratio. I will touch this also in a moment. And then also Mark alluded to it already. For us, we are business, we are B2B, so we made sure this device has the business features our customer are requiring. This goes from a, from a barcode reader to a, a professional docking unit and docking connector, but also through really you know enterprise fit housing like you have on the back of the unit, you have mounting screws where you can uh, install corner rings, but also you can attach it to wall mounts, to forklift mounts. And also we have a little configuration area here, which we provide to our third party uh, 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 partners, which they can configure a special customized unit. So integrated here is a special uh, Panasonic bus and then you can attach to that barcode uh, uh, grids. You can attach serial USB buses, smart card reader. So basically, um, yes, that's the device as it is. We bring it to the market, but maybe tomorrow with our partners, with our customers, you can even modify that to the needs uh, which they have. And then uh, we have two SKUs. One is the Windows SKU, one is the Android SKU, and they're almost identical. Basically, that's uh, the message you're going to uh, put across. So the um, embedded version uh, for Microsoft has a little bit higher CPU because of uh, also the high-end requirements of, of Windows 8.1 embedded. And uh, accordingly, also the, the graphic engine of course, the buttons, uh, we have three Windows buttons to um, the, the three Android buttons. But besides this, um, the housing, the applications, the features are identical. In terms of product positioning, is uh, first of all, we put this again against handhelds. And those are the type of, of rugged handhelds in, in the market. And uh, which we which we want, want want to approach, and you can see here single core, dual core. So we are setting new standards, and even the the latest uh, type of of launches here in, in this portfolio are all around dual core. We made it possible uh, to, uh, to to put a quad core on board, but still with the battery capacity with uh, 6,200 milliampere, we made sure. We're not sacrificing with that on battery life. The opposite is the case. We are also having their uh, breaking new battery standards for mobility and field use. And then we look at the same same thing for smartphones because we know the smartphones are, are everywhere. Yeah, they go everywhere. They try to replace cameras, camcorders. Uh, we know the trend. That's why we need to also look against the smartphones and. Uh, what you can see here is that uh, also the battery is even smaller because of the small housing, but also they claim they, uh, uh, that they are rugged, but they aren't. If you look at the IP standards, yes, this is an easy one for them to uh, make them withstand some, uh, some splashes, but uh, we have a new standard with 
with XA that goes even underwater. But this is maybe a thing which, which they still can copy, but where it gets difficult is also to operate with those devices in minus degree, plus temperature. We know some famous brand, they switch the, the screen black when it gets too, too hot. And uh, also um, all our rugged features like 3 meter drop, etc., they are mint certified, which the smartphones aren't, so they can't guarantee that basically from, from manufacturing. In terms of display, we have a HD display uh, with a quite good uh, resolution. It's 284 ppi, <coughs> higher than retina resolution. So you can get a really crystal clear picture here. Good for mapping, card application, navigation, and, and all sorts of, of detailed application and maps you want to run on, on the screen. <coughs> And then what, what's for us important is also that you not only have a beautiful screen when you're in office, that you also have a screen which you can use out, outdoor. And, and uh, outdoor means for us, uh, yeah, the temperature range, but also the sun, but rain and, and gloves, and I want to touch on this a little bit more. So first of all, glove touch. And what I'm talking here, not that you can use, it has a capacitive screen, but what I mean is not that you can use special capacitive made gloves. You can use all sorts of uh, available gloves in, in the market because we tuned the sensor uh, with uh, a Panasonic and uh, we made sure if you enable the glove touch, that uh, even five millimeter above the bezel, it detects the, the, the finger. You can also play in, in the brake and, and, and watch it with, with, with your finger itself. So this is basically what we made. Based on this, we can use all sorts of gloves. You don't need to select and purchase special, special gloves. All, all sorts of gloves are, are working. That's what our customer is, is asking us. All customers are MOD utility. I'm a lot also in, in Russia and attending customer workshops and the first thing those people are asking me those questions. What is the minus degree? Can I use gloves? They work in gas and oil and utility industry. For them, this is more, more important than anything else. When does it rain last time in your city? And I uh, can't remember. I mean, uh, especially the folks from England, maybe, maybe know that, but also in Germany, we had an awful summer. And um, so what we made here is even, even more interesting from technology point of view. So we included on this one, you have a capacitive touch sensor, but on top we have included to that device a pressure sensor. So basically, when I put the finger on it, I have the touch detects the finger, as a touch, but also the pressure sensor, to, sensor detects, wow, there's pressure from the finger. When only the raindrop <coughs> appears on it, the touch sensor may detect the raindrop, but the pressure sensor doesn't detect anything. That means for them, hold on, it's a raindrop and it will not operate any, any operation on the screen. So that is, in, in short, what, what we're doing here. And also you can enable the device in certain rain walks for middle, harsh, and, and, and really big, big rain. And then you can work also with device un, under these conditions. So basically the device uh, in standard mode has 10 finger touch. And in rain mode you just increase the, the threshold uh, to, to make this possible. And uh, this is the sun, obviously. And also here. What we want to put uh, across, I believe, with this slide is, yes, brightness is important, but not everything. Yeah? So with 500 candela, good brightness of this device, most uh, important is always reflection ratio. That makes the difference. That makes the difference. And how we made this is also by uh, a special uh, Panasonic uh, uh, technology that uh, we embedded here between the sensor panel and the LCD module, some direct bonding material, while others uh, likely have an air gap, gap, air gap also, when it comes a little bit 
view it, you can get some condensed impact on the screen, but also the reflection is higher. So we're speaking here 6.5% versus 15% uh, uh, industry market or uh, ordinary smartphone uh, reflection. And this makes the, the, the difference uh, which we're looking at. In terms of, of battery life, so later when, when you look at this <coughs> device, you may also say, okay, that's a good one, but couldn't you do it a little bit thinner maybe? It's 30 millimeter thick. But no, we, we made it as it is because of, of the ruggedization, but also, most and more important, the battery. Yeah? So we have a high capacity battery, exchangeable battery, and uh, this battery is featuring the, the quad core, but still it gives you 1,000 hours standby, 23 hours talk time, and uh, 14 hours data access, data access under wireless LAN, LTE environment. So we're switching there between LTE and, 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 and wireless LAN. And on top it has a, a, a hot swap functionality, which I come also in uh, a little bit, bit later. So this is uh, definitely battery life. It's one of the USBs we are push, pushing here. Double, double the competition. And um, quick charge feature is important. Yeah, if you have a high capacity battery, maybe it can take a long time to charge them. And so how we make there the difference is that we're not using USB charger, we're using our own Panasonic charger. Some people, some customer complain to us and say, why are you using a charger? No, we do it by purpose. They are rough. They, you can bend them and you can lock them. But most important is they have three ampere. So they have a higher current as a USB charger. And by that you can uh, charge the device quicker. And uh, in one hour you've got already 40% charged off. Uh, as I said, we incorporated the uh, hot swap button, the capacitor. Basically, it gives you two minutes time to exchange the battery in, in the field. Important, people are asking for it, also for service purpose. You know that a lot of tablets, a lot of smartphones have the battery glued on, on the board. What are you doing when uh, uh, after two years and the battery goes down? Here you can exchange this in terms of service, but also in the field to expand your battery life to, to endless uninterrupted working. And now we come to the uh, little bit fun part. And uh, yeah, we made the device rock three meters. Uh, find a device in a market which has the same drop height. We didn't, but uh, have a look. We think this is outstanding. X8, it goes under the water. 1.5 meter for 30 minutes, and then we made certain other tests. So that there's some some durable tests like washing machine. So we also drop iron balls on the screen, like 400 gram from 80 centimeter, and all sorts of things. And I guess we we start with the with the drop here. You see you see that device. So basically that could be a typical scenario here. And um, let's see how it's doing. Where's the interesting part is now? All works. And uh, I would say let's have a look at the water. I'm not sure if we have enough water to be frank because. Uh,
It's another important thing. Don't worry, we don't demonstrate for you now heat and, and, and cold here. But uh, it's also one thing why, why a smartphone is not capable for minus degree. Is, uh, this is a nice feature here. Yeah? We have a built-in heater for the battery and, only with, and also for the display. And only uh, those type of add-ons yeah, make it possible to, to work in that harsh environment. We have with our Snapdragon uh, a really high capacity, uh, uh, high high performance CPU, 4.5 as a as a standard uh, dual core CPU, state of the art latest technology, and we decided for Windows 8 point handheld embedded, and Goran will talk there a little bit uh, uh, more in in a few minutes. But basically, the idea is really to say we have a close relationship to Microsoft. We were one of the first OEMs at all, thanks to the great cooperation with Microsoft, who were at all able to put that on board. We believe that's the right OS at, at, at the right moment, because it uh, has a good uh, congruency with, with Windows 8, and it's made for business and it's supporting the business features we need, like integrated smart card barcode, USB host, etc. Warren will touch there in, in a moment, but we're really delighted to be one of the first OEMs to carry out the Windows 8.1 handheld embedded on our handheld tablet. And GPS is, is an important thing, right? So when you use the device, you make some navigation, it's the classic application, and it's always the question, how precise is that? And I, I looked for you in, into that a little bit deeper and say, where, where are we making the difference here? Because the GPS is the integrated in, in the Qualcomm. Basically, it's a standalone, but featured by, by Qualcomm. But where we make the difference, again, is the GPS antenna. Because in a smartphone, you don't have that space. So the antenna is, is small, but we incorporate here on the side along the chassis a really good sensitive GPS antenna and by this we can uh, feature a nice high precision signal for all people who like to use GPS in the field. <coughs> and a similar story is for, for barcode reading. So you know a lot of smartphones they have maybe a 1D barcode or laser barcode but then for 2D they're using the back cam. So this way we, we didn't go. So we have incorporated in the device a 1D, 2D uh, barcode imager who can read up to 40 types of, of different barcodes, also special industrial barcodes from airline and, and transportation, which been asked by, by our customer. And we will demonstrate this to you later in the touch and try session. In terms of, of the buttons, those are here and also on the side. We made sure they're big enough. You can hit them also with gloves and also in the field, intuitive, that you don't even need to look where they are. You can feel them. They are uh, comfortable and, and, and big enough. And also you can configure them. It's also important for our customers that they can put their customer and corporate applications on them and you can uh, even configure them by pressing combinations of buttons and long and short term. So basically by that, when you're increasing the, the applications you, put, uh, you can put under, under those shortcuts. In terms of um, camera, and we talked yesterday uh, the whole night about cameras, and uh, therefore, um, we know it's important for, for consumer, but also for business. Each business application by now requires the camera. Why? Because they want to document the work they have done, sometimes to engineer, to, to, to check it, but sometimes it's a documentation, it's a report at the end of the day. It could be sales, engineering, whoever is, is working with that device. So therefore, you need to make sure now, as OIM, that you have a, good, a camera, which we did, with uh, 8 megapixel, 
and also a proper BSI sensor. But we made also sure that you have good color ratio and that you have a good uh, flash, high brightness flash, one meter, 100 lux. So basically, also later, please have a look at this. This is some some feature where we put some 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 eye on to make it right. And uh, another one is uh, communication, voice. So when you have a device, handheld smartphone with voice in it, make sure the voice is right. And uh, we, may, we learned also here uh, our, our lessons. And basically, one feature is also when, when I talk with, with somebody, do I have a good, good understanding of what, what they're saying? So for that, we incorporate three mics. We have here a mic here mic and we have on the back on the mic. The mic on the back is only there to absorb the uh, surrounding background noise and take it out. And why we have two mics here is basically also for freehand applications. Maybe you, you have it here, you have it here on the desk. So basically when you talk to the device, you're not holding like that. Maybe you hold it like that. Yeah, talk to the device. Yeah. And then also this mic can switch on capture um, uh, the, the, best, the best voice frame uh, possible. And why you can use it basically like a standalone device like this? Because it has also proper loudspeaker. And a uh, little demonstration. If test, this is a loudspeaker. Our Windows strategy for business customers is clear. 
we will deliver devices and experiences that users love to use on a personal level while delivering to our business customers enterprise grade solutions and that they require basically. This is where we believe that Microsoft has a unique position to deliver actually unique value delivering something that's actually based on the experience but also deep technical expertise and understanding unique needs that both consumer and business customers have. What does this mean for our business or enterprise customers? Well, when we look at our total uh, whole ecosystem, our, uh, one of the, our key products like Windows 8.1, it's been designed with business customers in mind. It's designed to bring the best business tablets, phones and PCs to the market, while combined with productivity applications and platforms like Office 365, it actually, which actually brings unprecedented levels of flexibility, fidelity of working with, on devices with multiple different sizes, like small, small factor devices like mobile phones, up to really large screens. And all of, this, all of these products in our uh, ecosystem are sharing common core and enterprise-grade security. While working with Panasonic, we basically have actually extended our large partner ecosystem and Panasonic is definitely one of the key players in, in this partner ecosystem uh, that is delivering, delivering solutions to our uh, enterprise and industry customers. We worked and collaborated with Panasonic on, on delivering solutions to the customers whether they, work, have they, whether they have workers working indoors, outdoors, they're facing customers, they're delivering different types of sales and, and services, or they're, uh, have, uh, they're focused on specific uh, tasks in their daily work, whether it's inventory, warehouse, also manufacturing, a number of different uh, uh, industries. So what is the role of industry handheld devices, where, where we have partnered with Panasonic for many years? Basically, they are used for connecting with customers, and one of the examples here is uh, using those devices, in, for instance, in retail environments, where our, our customers, our enterprise users, are using it for, to connect with their customers, to collect data, and then also manage operational tasks. Once this data is collected, it's analyzed and transformed into business insights. And these business insights then can be used to actually bring competitive <coughs> advantage to the, co to the company and ultimately a long-term uh, success in, in their business operations. When we look at the, a little bit of, uh, at the evolution of the industry handhelds, I'd like to show what they used to be and what we think they should be today. They used to be very specifically designed rugged devices and where their design was following more their function, what they were designed to do. But they were designed usually to do only single one task. They had very, so they had very task-specific configurations. Their operating system was designed to basically work on very low-end uh, CPUs with very limited memory and features like wireless connectivity or radio were only added as additional options. And they had, when it comes to development of their applications, they had very specialized development process. Uh, they had very limited compatibility with other devices. And that basically ultimately resulted in long development and, and long uh, support life cycles. When we look at the today's devices or what they should be, they actually have, like device uh, from Panasonic, multiple levels of durability and extensive use in specific field. They are designed more benchmarked against what consumer devices are looking like. They are very flexible devices, which means they're not operating only, uh, they don't have only one purpose. They, are, they can be used for multiple different tasks. They have very fast development cycle for developing a specific applications for them. And extensive compatibility actually is coming more and more into the market between consumer and enterprise devices. Also, application compatibility is becoming more and more important to customers across a number of different devices in their ecosystem, in, in the IT infrastructure they're using in their business. So we've 
listen to the feedback from our customers. We've had long and a lot of discussions with them, and here's what they told us. When we look at the industry customers, the enterprises, and the people who are business managers uh, uh, in those organizations, they actually need to quickly respond to their business needs. They told us, as, as, uh, as an evergreen, they always need to reduce operational costs and even have higher utilization of devices. Uh, the infrastructure they invested in, they want to be used for multiple purposes, not just for one purpose. IT managers in these same organizations, on the other hand, have uh, the need to deploy, secure, and then manage in different types of scales all of those devices in, it, in the IT infrastructure, ultimately having the goal of improving the operational productivity of their workforce and, again, uh, reducing the cost. So, we've looked at two different worlds and tried to understand and discuss with, uh, with our customers uh, what are the good sides, for instance, in the consumer, on the consumer side, in the consumer devices, where you have some uh, positives like very, they're very familiar with, end users are very familiar with this technology. Technology changes really rapidly and they, they develop really fast and they are quite relatively low cost uh, from the cost perspective. However, they do have a number of negative sides as well. There's an extensive quantity of malware on these devices. There's a quite a big fragmentation of not only operating system but even of, of applications that are running on devices. And they are not really designed with enterprise in, in mind. And as a final key important thing that our enterprise customers are telling us, uh, these devices don't have extended or have lack actually peripheral support. When we look at the rugged industrial devices and even historically, they, are, they have good sides as well. Uh, they are proven in the market. They have enterprise applications developed specifically for them. They have great peripheral support. The developer community has really deep knowledge about how to work uh, and how to develop for these devices and they have quite long uh, life cycles. There are also negative sides uh, uh, in this side of the world, in, in, in rugged or, or commercial specific handheld devices. Most of the devices according to our surveys and actually also discussing with our partner like Panasonic, most of the devices the customers are using are quite old and they're breaking up. They're not as easy as you, uh, to use as the modern devices not easy to develop or even support, and they like any modern app compatibility. So what we've done while developing our latest operating system, Windows Embedded 8.1 handheld, we try to combine the best of, uh, of the both worlds from consumer side and, and commercial side. And that's where we come with the product that's actually released uh, uh, very fresh. And it's, it's really great to see that Panasonic is one of the first partners delivering this product on their very specialized rugged device like uh, Toughpad FZD. So what is Windows Embedded 8.1 handheld? What is this operating system with, I must admit, rather large, long name? Well, basically, to put it simply, it's Windows Phone 8.1. It's Windows Phone 8.1 operating system that comes from a lot of consumer devices that Microsoft is selling and, and developing with our partners, while on top having specific industry device features, like multi-user enabled use, because a lot of the companies in the industry actually have the device that multiple people are using depending on the shifts, depending on their roles. It has great device management feature on top of this. It has industry standard APIs for, for peripherals, so peripheral, extended peripheral support, and uh, this support is extended from both uh, perspective of hardware and software. And once you combine all of these features from basically typical Windows Phone 8.1 operating system with industrial features, you come with a great product. And I'd like to congratulate Panasonic to, on delivering an uh, awesome product like this one, Panasonic Toughpad FZD1, that runs latest iteration of Microsoft Windows Embedded Operating System. Just a quick look at the bit of the history and the product roadmap and look into the future. First of all, we've listened, as I said, to our customers and delivered a number of different features which were integrated in the latest update, which has been released just uh, ahead of this summer. Out of those, I would like to point out a couple of them, like multi-user uh, uh, enablement, great management features, hard, uh, uh, encryption of the device, remote manageability of the device, a number of other features which are really 
the ones that our customers have been asking for. So basically, Windows Embedded 8.1 Handheld brings the enterprise class devices and enterprise class features, which have assigned access, development of the applications, they are optimized for, for line of business applications uh, that our industry customers need, while also combining all of those efforts with the best-in-class hardware. And this device that we are launching together with Panasonic today is actually a result of really <coughs> long joint work, where both engin engineers from both sides would sit together, discuss customer needs, and, and come up with a device that has very special features when it comes to handheld device like USB host feature. Uh, even though the devices have voice capability, we can deliver to customers if they require, require so only Wi-Fi devices. Uh, they have integrated uh, different types of scanners already with drivers developed for, for the devices. They can get connected with uh, uh, interface devices like keyboards and, mi and mice in different types of different applications that customers require. So, basically, What's really key to understand about Windows uh, Embedded 8.1 Handheld Kit is shares the same core that the rest of the Microsoft ecosystem has on all of our products. What this means is when developers and customers are potentially developing themselves the applications that they will use in their everyday work, they need to write once and with very little uh, effort in terms of porting, or even actually no porting required, they can run the same applications for same application on the very small screen factor devices like Windows Embedded handheld devices, Windows Phone devices, up to Windows tablets, full x86 desktop PCs, very specialized devices like embedded devices, uh, kiosk, etc., etc. Et This means well, once the application is written, just as a very simple example, in this case uh, Windows Bing Travel, which is a Microsoft application, it can run on Windows Phone or rather device that we are presenting here with Windows Embedded 8.1 handheld and also on a full Windows tablet with various different uh, screen sizes and, and hardware capabilities. Historically, just a quick reminder that Microsoft has been in this industry since year 2003. We, we had our Windows Mobile products at that time, and many of them are still running in, in, in vertical industries and, and are still being used by our customers. We are providing still extensive support for some of those products. But we've done a fresh, a new refresh with our latest iteration of operating system, Windows Embedded 8 handheld, and the latest iteration that this device is running, 8.1. One important thing to note here is I've said handheld product is basically Windows Phone with added uh, industry features. Well, we've also aligned the release cycle with Windows Phone products. So basically, in future, when we get to the points of the next version of this product, they will very similarly be updated, uh, just like our typical consumer and business-oriented Windows Phone products. And one final point is, when we are discussing with our current customers and future customers, uh, we always ask them a couple of key questions, which you can see here. We are focusing on the fact that uh, if they need to fully manage their mobile devices in the enterprise, they have large scope of different devices and they're all part of one single integrated system. And if they have a need to manage them, most of our enterprise customers have that. Uh, we like to have a discussion with them on this. If they like to get more productivity from their devices, um, one of the key questions which we believe is differentiating Microsoft from our competitors is if customer really has a great consistent experience across all of their IT infrastructure. One point which is, might not be here on the slide, but it's also do they want extended support and basically securing their uh, investment into the future. If the answer to these questions is yes, then we believe that our Windows Embedded 8.1 handheld operating system combined with great devices like Panasonic Toughpad FZ-E1 is the perfect solution for these customers. So I'd like to maybe conclude with three top key points that uh, if you leave from this presentation today, uh, that I'd like you to remember. Windows Embedded 8.1 Handheld is basically Windows Phone with added uh, uh, enterprise features. 
It shares the same core as the rest of the Microsoft uh, uh, ecosystem, and we will continue into the future integration and tight integration of all of these products into a Microsoft ecosystem. And you need to write your application once and very easily port it or run it on multiple different devices. With this, oops. With this, I'd like to thank you for your time and congratulate once again Panasonic on, on releasing such a great devices as ZP1. Thank you.